What's it going to take for the Lions to beat the Packers? Let's Talk Lions. Welcome back to an all new episode here at Let's Talk Lions. My name is Jay, the host of this show. If you like the Lions, then it's probably worth subscribing. And if you have a friend who likes the Lions, maybe send them this video because they too could enjoy. Little news for you guys. First and foremost, you all know if you want to buy the Let's Talk Lions hat, you can do so. Link in the description. But also something really cool dropping today. Former Lions wide receiver Herman Moore just dropped an app called Lions Nation Unite. It's a platform where you guys as Lions fans can go and find all content created about the Detroit Lions by people like myself, Joseph Dion, Detroit Lions podcast, bunch of different creators dropping all of our content in there so that you don't have to go to a hundred different places to find it. You can now find it within the app itself. Not to mention you guys, there's free giveaways. You guys can have your own profiles on it, comment and go nuts. It's basically an app for the fans made by Herman Moore. Doesn't get much better than that. Now let's roll into today's video. What is it going to take for the Lions to beat the Packers. First and foremost, I know that when I did my record prediction, I said the Lions would lose this game against Green Bay. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Based on the Lions' performance last week and based on the Packers' performance last week, there is a shot for the Lions to upset the Packers in Week 2 at Lambeau. Yeah, you heard me say it. I mean, you look at us against San Francisco, had there not been the pick six and the missed field goal, Lions win that game. And so... The way that Detroit came back, the way that Detroit fought tooth and nail to the very end, and the way that Green Bay just threw their hands up, called the quits. Listen, guys, I think that we have a shot to win this game. But some things to note are, yeah, Green Bay looked awful against New Orleans. However, it's not something that we should overreact to. Remember, it is Rodgers, it is Green Bay. Yeah, they had a very poor showing, but I do not believe that it is indicative of of their entire season. Though, there are a lot of areas for the Lions to be able to capitalize on coming into this week, so we're going to talk about it. I mean, when you look at it, Rodgers' performance was a rarity. You don't see that often. It was bad. However, coming into this week, he's pissed off. And the Detroit Lions secondary struggled. However, so did Green Bay's secondary. Two very bad secondaries, very bad performances last week. So Rodgers, Goff, both offenses, I believe this could be quite a high scoring game. Now for the sake of not talking your ears off for this video not being 90,000 forever minutes long, I'ma try to keep it brief and pick the most glaring issues. First and foremost, Green Bay's defense was awful. Just God awful. What I find most fascinating about it, and hey, hit me up in the comments if you know more regarding this issue. Why did Green Bay hire the Detroit Lions defensive coordinator from the 0-16 season? Like, like where, where did that idea come into play? And if you're just hearing that for the first time, yeah, Green Bay hired Joe Barry, the Detroit Lions coordinator from the 0-16 year. Now, I'm not blaming the performance of Green Bay's defense last week on Joe Barry himself. I think there's a ton of elements that go into this. However, to hire a guy from the 0-16 season, when I just, I'm, I'm very confused. I feel like somebody just casted confusion on me and now I'm just, oh... Green Bay could not stop the run against New Orleans. Alvin Kamara just ran all over the place. In the first half, New Orleans put up 140 rushing yards total. Green Bay just couldn't stop the run. They couldn't stop Jameis Winston, which was wild. It was just flustering. I mean, Green Bay's secondary was awful. They looked lost out there, like Walt in every episode of Lost Ever, and you hear Michael calling his name 17 times per episode. Walt! 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 We're going to dig a little deeper into that secondary in a bit, but for now, looking at point number two, let's talk about Rodgers. Rodgers had one of the worst performances of his career. I mean, he threw for what? 133 yards, so 4.8 yards per attempt, zero TDs, that's right. 
zero. He threw for two interceptions and he had a passer rating of 36.8. Now you compare that to Goff versus the Niners. Goff put up 338 yards. So we're going to 5.9 yards per attempt, 66% completion percentage, three TDs, one interception, and a passer rating of 92. So when you look at the two of those, and this is against the Niners defense, both defenses, New Orleans, 49ers, great Ds. The amount of pressure that New Orleans put on Rodgers was phenomenal. You're looking at a total of 15 QB pressures, six QB hits, two sacks. The Packers O-line really struggled. New Orleans was able to apply the pressure, something that the Lions have struggled to do for quite some time. There are so many games where I just watch friggin' Rodgers in the backfield just dancing, just bouncing, bouncing like Jean Ralphio, and it's, it's, it's frustrating. But the good thing for the Lions coming into this game was seeing how much the Packers O-line struggled to protect Rodgers. Now, our D-line, when you look at it, hey, there's some promise here. Our D-line came alive, specifically in the fourth quarter. But some things that we did well was we stopped the run. We stopped the Niners' run. Trey Flowers came up big, forcing that fumble at the end of the game. Romeo Quara, four pressures total. Tracy Walker coming in with a sack. It really is, when you look at both of our secondaries, the Packers and the Lions secondaries, there's a lot of gappage out there. Obviously, the Lions, we lost Jeff Okuda to the ruptured Achilles, which means Oruwarie is going to have to step up. We did bring back Quinton Dunbar. The Lions secondary really will have to step up. Can our D-line apply pressure quickly enough through the Packers' struggling O-line, apply that pressure, not allow Rodgers to pick apart our secondary? Our secondary allowed roughly 17 yards per completion, which is brutal. And the best component of our secondary was... Tracy Walker. So this is where I really think it's going to be a higher scoring game because of Rodgers versus our secondary and Goff versus Green Bay's secondary. Green Bay's secondary looked bad. They couldn't stop Winston. They couldn't stop the New Orleans Saints wide receivers. Walt! 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 So how will they fare against Goff, a guy who put up 338 yards? I mean, if you look at PFF's selection, they kind of broke down Green Bay's secondary. I'll throw the stats here on the screen. It is quite fascinating. Alexander, King, Amos, all of these guys giving up far too many yards per completion. Their passer rating allowed, not great. All in all, when looking at it, can their secondary shut us down? <laughs> now, look, I know that the Lions wide receiver core... Is pretty iffy. It is pretty iffy when I look at what we were able to do against the Niners wide receiver wise. Nothing great. Nothing to write home about. It was really Hawkinson, Williams, and Swift for the most part when it came to the amount of attempts from Goff. Is that an area where Goff is going to be looking downfield more? Is he going to be looking for Khalif Raymond more? Now, Terrell Williams is out on concussion protocol. That is a big hit coming into this week. He is wide receiver one. So looking at that, we brought back Geronimo Allison onto the practice squad. Will he be an active roster guy? We will find out. But I do find that to be intriguing when looking at Goff versus their secondary and Rodgers versus our secondary. I think this is going to be a higher scoring game. Now, very specifically for the Lions, one of our shining aspects Oddly enough, is our running back game. I look at our running backs, DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams. We are going to see them utilized a ton. If our rush attack is anything like it was last week, I think the Lions can pull out the W. Now, I know I just threw a lot at you, so let me kind of boil it all down. When I look at this game, here's what I see. I see a different Detroit Lions team. I see a Detroit Lions team that did not give up and fought back to the very bitter end, almost pulling out a W. I saw the Packers throw their hands up and give up. I see Jared Goff shaking out the jitters, finding confidence, and settling in. An actual running game from Detroit that poses a legitimate threat to Green Bay's defense. I also see a pissed off Rodgers 
coming for blood. Two really bad secondary performances last week. A high scoring game based off of last week's performances and a legitimate chance for Detroit to upset Green Bay at Lambeau. Looking at all of this, not what I expected coming out of week one into week two. Man, I just expected them to roll us and I think that's probably the past experiences talking. However, after looking at the information, watching the way Green Bay performed, watching the way that Detroit performed, we could be looking at a real upset here. One of these two defenses is going to have to get their act together and it very well could be Detroit. What about you? How do you all see the game going? Do you think that Detroit actually poses a threat to Green Bay in week two? Or do you think that Rodgers comes back, cracks the old knuckles, gets out there, and stomps on our head like a brood of vipers? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Does Detroit stand a chance? And now, a message from our sponsor. If you're looking to get an advantage over your sports book this season, download BetQL from your App Store or Google Play Store. Their best bets computer model scans over 350,000 unique bets per year to give you the best betting recommendation for each game, and they give you solid reasons why you should. They cover everything from spreads, over-unders, and player prop bets. And if you're more of a lone wolf like White Fang, when it comes to researching, BetQL has a ton of different tools for your own betting research. I'm talking sharp data, line movement, team summaries, lineup and injury news, you name it. Click the link in the description and by doing so, enter the word LIONS as a discount code during checkout and you get 25% off your betting subscription. In fact, if you check out their BetMGM offer, you get a free year of BetQL. You have to use this link to redeem that offer. Check out their sports book offer page to claim free offers upon signing up at one of the many sports books listed. You can find all this information in the description of this video. It's a great chance to beat your sports books this year.